Johnson's there, Billy did. The goal, Chris Billy Huddersfield Town. The most famous goal of Chris Billy's life. Is this the moment for Lee Fowler? It is. Take your place in Division 2, Huddersfield Town. Oi, thank you. Steve Simonson's boots now. He's missed. Steve Simonson clears the flame of the goal and collapses in a heap of tears. Huddersfield Town are promoted. Stephen Schindler has a chance to write his name in Huddersfield Town legend. And he takes that chance. Hello and welcome to episode 209 of the Annie Takes His Chance podcast. No Matt Sadler this week, but just like Tom Lees, I answered the call of duty. Whether I'm fit or not is another matter than that as well. But I'm your host, Cosy. Also joining us is Devon's finest. He's enjoying an amazing season with his Torquay team in administration. And his terrier's one foot in the grave is Johnny Gillespie. Hi, Johnny. Evening. We have four people here tonight. Yes, four people here tonight. And like Jack Rodoni, we didn't think we'd see him back so quick. Josh Quirk returns to the building. Hi, Josh. How are you doing, mate? You all right? Yeah, banging me. It's been a great few days, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah, awesome. And a pub debut. Hopefully not a like hyena at Preston or a Kwame Adu two for us all the time. As I can't remember which game that one actually had that as well. <laughs> it's uh, my fellow bald town brother, Mr. John McNamara. John, hi there. Good evening, man. Good evening. Looking forward to this. Not. No worries. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Apparently, John's been on before. It's not a debut. So, yeah, God, it's all started well, this podcast as well. <laughs> but we are still sponsored, unless they're going to withdraw the sponsorship after this debacle of an opening by Magic Rock Brewing. You can find their fine establishments in Huddersfield Town Centre and Home Firth. And if you go on their website, which I did tonight, you can find some beautiful merchandise at magicrockbrewing.com. So, there we go. Guys, I don't know where we start really in that as well. I was tempted to start with uh, yesterday, but I am not. I'm going to start with Preston North End versus Huddersfield Town. So it feels like a long time ago, doesn't it, when uh, we got a midweek uh, game and that as well. So obviously Preston North End for Huddersfield Town won, which is a result I don't think anyone saw coming, certainly after uh, 80 minutes. Uh, tacticians in the house. I got a 4 4 1 1. Ben Jackson stayed in the team, which was quite surprising, really, after his performance against Millwall and hold off at half time. But he did stay in the team. There's only one change uh, Ben Wiles coming for Bojan Radulovic. And yeah, uh, go come to you first, Josh. I thought the first half was kind of decent. I thought the back four was strong. Uh, we kind of you know, withstood any you know physical challenge that they get that they threw at us and they threw quite a little bit. Uh, I thought the counter attack were good. Uh, I thought Thomas Wiles and Birdsod were you know good bringing forward, and obviously, yeah, we got the goal. Uh, it looked a strange one from our end, didn't it? I didn't realize Kroma had three touches from where we were and, and that as well. But yeah, mate, uh, Preston was subdued, the fans were quiet, and yeah, we got that all important uh goal before the break. How did you? See that well, one of them. I think Preston looked a bit nervous because it was obviously quite a big game for them as well, weren't you? But I think we came out and I think we played quite well. We were knocking ball about. Obviously, we were sort of sitting back a little bit and trying to hit on break. But I think it sort of suited us. I know, like there were a lot of, oh, we're not, we're not really playing with a striker up top. But if we're going on, if we're trying to play on break, you need pace up top. And the strikers we've got haven't, haven't really got that. And I thought for the first fifty-five minutes of the game, we were really, we, we were decent. We were a better team. We deserve to be leading. Unfortunately, it's just that same old, same old again. That ten minutes after half time, isn't it? That's absolutely done us. And oh man, it just like a, just a Stoke game. It went like all over again, wasn't it? We got that lead right on half time. And uh, Johnny, what do you think to the goal? Karoma took it really well. Uh, I thought it'd been quite dangerous in the last uh, two games. Obviously, yeah, uh, you know, got a goal yesterday, which we'll come on to later on. But yeah, I don't know how you felt kind of going into the break, but I don't. All I was saying to my friends was the first 50 minutes is key game management. Just don't give them anything and that as well. But you, again, like so many games I've seen this season, I always think of back of my mind, I don't think Preston can be as bad as that again. And uh, yeah, what, how were you kind of seeing it at half time? Uh, did you, did, were you confident or were you just again thinking like me, God, either they're going to be here? 
never, never confident, never confident with Town. But that's just not necessarily down to performance. That's just years of them watch them. We actually struggled to get him. He was paying the game. They had one, one, one person taking money. So the queue was about around the block. I actually managed to buy Anita Burger before I even got into the ground queue. What time did he get in, Johnny? Must have been a good seven minutes past. I said to said to my mate who's who's a Torquay fan. Um, I was taking nil nil before we even get into the ground at this rate. We had a few kind of like hairy moments. It sounded like because I missed the first seven minutes, but um, I think I think we, like I think like Josh said, really, you could probably look at that and say we didn't play well. But I, I disagree and say that um, we didn't play good football. But we did what we needed to do. That we, we kept it tight. There were only one or two kind of times he slightly got in relatively early on from when I got into the ground to about tenth minute. I think. Ben Jackson got wrong side and they cut in and he got quite in a dangerous area. They tried to pull it back and it didn't quite come off. But other than that, looking at the stats now, they didn't have a shot on target. So that's that's good. Um, and do we, do we, we did look to counter. Um, I still think we, we could make more an impact if, I, if we could pass the ball. I know Matt's covered that to death, but there are a few times where to win pass was slightly behind or a little bit slower than they need to be, which affected our ability to break. But we, we did well. Um, the goal itself was a little bit of pinball. Um, it, it, but like I say, when it, it got across to Karoma, he did well to kind of trap it, um, to return inside it and, and finish it. And I think Preston fans might not necessarily agree, might be slightly biased, but I thought, do you mean, we, we'd away performance which would shut up shot well we kept it tight looked to counter had a couple of all right chances and, and, and one came off and we were probably good value for a lead and um, I was quite positive um, really looking into the second half that we've done if they hadn't threatened um, Preston are, I mean they are up there but they're probably their best player wasn't playing um, they've not got kind of not got a place to kind of rip you apart I know it's a bit of a, a bogey ground. We have broken that curse, but it's not somewhere with happy hunting ground. But I thought, do we keep it tight? Keep playing what we're doing. Worst case scenario, we might concede one and, and, and should hopefully be at least good for a point, which I'd have taken before before kickoff. So um, hmm. didn't really expect to, to what happened happen really in the final 45 minutes. No, uh, I'll just come on to you, John. Delano Bergeson, we'll, we'll kind of mention the, the carry on after the game later on, but he was quite fascinating to hear uh, Brighton Wright's press conference and uh, he all came out, didn't he, that he weren't happy with the Coventry carry-on where he took about half an hour to get off the pitch. He cost him his place in, in the team uh, against Mill, obviously, was start, you know, playing against Preston North End. But the one thing that I noticed in this game, mate, it seemed to be a lot more unselfish. It's almost like, I don't know whether that just how it looked or, you know, because of yeah. what you know, Brighton Wright had said, but with the goal, he showed some really good with the goal, sorry, it showed some really great strength, uh, you know, kind of to get the ball in and, you know, to hold up his man. Obviously, went to Wiles first, got blocked and then went back to Bergsorg and it was a good goal on that as well. But, yeah, I think, again, I, I, I liked what Brighton Wright, you know, kind of gave us in the press conference because, again, you, you come from a diet of Dallin Moore talking bollocks and saying nothing, but it was quite an eye-opener, mate, and mm. I think he got a nice tune out of him and, and again... You know, when we come on to yesterday's game, I think he did that as well. But I don't know if you noticed the different birds or certainly in that first half. Yeah, so so what I'd say about Bergzog is um it, he's, he's probably the most infuriating player that I've seen since Van the Parra because um he has all the talent. I mean, I was watching the game yesterday, I don't want to skip ahead. Um, but even their commentators were saying that he does all the right things and then the absolute wrong thing. When all he needs to do is pass to somebody, he'll he'll take somebody on. When he, when he needs to shoot, he'll turn back. But I thought like the rest of the team, he was really good for 45, 55 minutes. His hold-up play was great on, on, on Tuesday night against Preston for the first 45, 50 minutes, as I say. Um, but after that, it, it, you know, the front three just weren't really involved after that, I didn't think. The ball just kept pinballing back to our defence time and time again. And, you know, I might come in for a bit of stick when I say this, but we're just one of the most unfit teams in the league. We really are. And it all goes back to, in my opinion, the, the Neil Warnock issue. I mean, notoriously, what he does is he comes into a club, he saves you from relegation, he runs the players into the ground, and then the next season, he doesn't really do much in pre-season, takes it easy, which he's going to do at his age. And then well, teams well, struggle. Games, John, well, tough one, they won it. 15 million, one of them, mate. Uh, how dare yeah, you? Yeah. How dare you slag the Messiah's pre-season? <laughs> But, you know, it's, it, it's born out over the season. We play well for 55, 60 minutes, then we just, we die in our ass. I mean, one of the goals, I think Stephen Chicken mentioned it in his in his five conclusions, but Brody Spencer literally looks like he's running in treacle. He really does. Like, he can't keep up with that forward. And the forward, 
I can't remember his name, sorry, the, the fellow who scored a hat-trick, but he doesn't seem like the fastest, the most nimble striker, but bloody hell, he looked like Mbappé against our back four in that last 10 minutes. I'll tell you what, John, have you make my notes? Because that's what I was going to say. It looked, uh, he looked a real really? fun, shall we say, and that as well when he came on and that as well. But like you said, his speed and power and everything was, you know, was unbelievable. But the, I think, I just don't know whether this had any contribution to the fold that we saw after the goal. But you know what, Johnny, I, I think... If you see someone smash a goal in a top corner net, like like the Ollie Watkins goal today, you're just thinking, top class, okay, you move on. But we can see such bad goals, mate. I mean, where do we even start here? Ben Wiles lost the ball, soft, kind of wanted a free kick, didn't get it. Then Dwayne Holmes gets the ball. Pearson kind of loses his man, but then Matos gets it back. A really bad touch. But then just to counter all that, I mean, that's, I don't think it would have penalty anyway in that as well, but why was he taking the ball back and just put all that together and then all of a sudden it's a penalty. It's just, it's just incredible, mate, from where it starts to how it ends. It's Doesn't it just sum up us good time pretty much the last two seasons, really? Just a complete mess. And it, I just wondered if the, the type of goals, I don't know if you agree, but it knocks the stuff in even more rather than a, a worldie or, does, or do football players just think, and goals a goal, or do you think that really hurts you even more? How it happens like that? I, th- I think it definitely does. Um, I, I think from like any like a management fan perspective, if you, if it's a thirty-five yard strike, um, I mean people can always point to things. You're thinking back to that. Uh, there was it the West Brom goal, which was a great finish, but there's still things you can you could try and stop before it. But fair enough. But that was just a catalogue of errors, wasn't it? Like I say, it started with Wiles, Matos. It's not going to slam him, but it, it was a shocking error. And then you, you tell me, what, is it a penalty or not a penalty? Um, I was there. It looked like a pen from, from live, but my view is absolutely shocking. Other end of the ground. Uh, when you watch it again, you can see actually, no, it's not from my personal opinion. Um, but it, there's so many ways in which you can you can try and prevent it. Um, and it, it's just it's just weak. And it, it, it's kind of, I mean, we've, we've gone from a team that was really quite strong defensively to a team that's really quite poor um, and even the second goal, the equaliser, um, I'd, I'd clocked Holmes just st- st- stood there, running into that space, massive space on, from from my view, to the way and looking at it, the right-hand side of the box, just waiting for the ball to come over, just waiting. And I, I don't know if it's Thomas um, who, who should be picking him up as like the coming kind of an attacker or if it's kind of like the fullback, but he's acres of space. He's got time to put his foot on the ball. It's a good run from a striker, but it's nothing incredible. Um, and it's a good finish, but equally he's kind of five yards out. And again, it's it's basic things. You've got players in the box in acres of space who, when they've got the ball, got time to take a touch and pick a pick a pass out. And at that stage, it wasn't. I mean, it's not late on. It's a, you're still at one one. You should you, you, the third and fourth goal. Again, there's still a catalogue of errors there, but tiredness or that kind of like mentality of we've just thrown it away. Is it can you still put 100 percent in at that point? You should be, but mentally it's a harder thing to do. But when you're one one, you're thinking, okay, we've messed up, but we've still got to take a point away at Preston, which would have been really good. And to kind of just lose your heads at that, it's it's not good enough. And like I said, ultimately, it's affected us in, in goal difference as well, which is at this stage of the season absolutely huge. But it's just something that's not acceptable. Um, and I think who you kind of ultimately point the finger at, it's quite hard. But yeah, um, it, it, it all starts with the, you know I mean? our, our own mistakes, our own downfall, which has been the, the case. I mean, there's plenty of examples you can point to the last couple of seasons where we've done that, really. So it is frustrating. Yeah, it was shocking. And just the fold, really, and that as well. It was incredible. I thought we were kind of pressing well and, and like, you know, hurrying them a little bit, but they just like went to pieces. And you, you kind of, when you watch it back, so like a few days on and watch it back today, just the space and time they had, like you mentioned there, Holmes, for that second goal, it was ridiculous. Like there were no one, you know, kind of near him and that as well. And then, like you were saying there, uh, you know, let's get him right, Militon. I was matches. I only came on, I thought, you know, he seemed to be a bit of a cult hero for them, but his pace and power, it was embarrassing, really. It were like, and the one guy that kind of epitomised it, who I thought it was such a good game up to a point, but just ran out of the field with Brody Spencer. I thought he were, you know, probably one of our best uh, players on, on the pitch, but just exhausted, though. He was just kind of chasing shadows. And at the end of fourth goal, kind of Spencer was covering as a centre-back. And the, the thing was just a total shambles, Josh. And I think it's quite alarming, really, isn't it? That, you know, I know we've had that many beatings. And I think there was some stat today that, 
I think if we'd lose another one by four or more, which just, just about to say fun. that you take it out of my mouth, yeah. like eight, eight times in it we've conceded four or more this season. If it happens once once more, it'll be a club record. Yeah, but there, there's, there's no way you could. You were just thinking, there's no way we're going to hang on here. Win summit this year. Yeah, yeah. Just, <laughs> just and Preston were just it was just obvious what was going to happen in that as well. But even at two, when you're thinking, could we do anything? I mean. I, the only thing that it did, Josh, he brought on all the strikers. And how many times, I mean, we were sat here against Rotherham and we should have changed it, but it just felt, right, right, I didn't get what he was thinking there because, like, I know he was just trying to change it, but all of a sudden we had all these strikers on. We took Matt off who, like, was a kind of a... It was almost... You know, sometimes you play that computer game where you just can't be out sometimes. You just sling every striker on and you're just thinking, I wonder what will happen here. And, you know, I'm thinking of both football manager games back in the day and stuff, but... It would just it just never worked, did it? You got like Ely coming on later on. We had Pat Jones and people just bumping into each other and basically win though, can he? Because it's like if you go to Rotherham, people are saying put strikers on <laughs> and he doesn't, and then he tries to go for a win at Preston, even at when it at one all, and then it just goes to absolute pot. But it's one it's one of them for me. It's just it all comes back to me that we've got no one we've got no one in midfield who can control a midfield. We've all said it for ages and ages and ages. Even at one all, you need a player in there to put a foot on ball and go, right, 10 minutes, let's just calm this down, let's keep ball, let's knock it back. Because we haven't got the ability to do that, and we, we genuinely play, we'll let you have the ball and we'll try and pick the ball off you. As soon as we get it, we can't do anything with it, and it just turns around again and it comes back at us and we just go to pot. And as soon as they get the second goal, it's job done, because then they're quite happy to let us have the ball. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're happy then for pick, to pick us off and go. And it happens time and time again. Like you said, for eight times this season, it's happened that where we have we can't control a game of football. Even if we go one nil up, as soon as anything happens and goes against mm. us, we just lose a shit, and that that's all it is. We have we, we can't control a game, and that's what it boils down to. And we've not been able for two for years. We've never replaced that Aaron Moy type figure. Since that time, who could do that and, and try and try and do that? Lewis O'Brien, yeah, but he picked up a ball and drove forward with it. We've never really controlled a game, been able to control a game of football since, and that's why we're getting beat so heavily because teams work at work out how to play at this level. You are so right. Yeah. Even in that, even in that first half, which I say we ended up with one nil, but um, so my, I took my mate with me, like say he was a Torquay fan, so he didn't watch time week in week out. He just said like you can't you can't pass a ball, like you got the ball and it was just like Smart quick off. Pressure or there was no plan. Whereas pressing art, pressing art in this league, they're not a great football team. They've had a manager for, yeah. for a couple of years, which helps. Um, but I mean, they've even got Dwayne Holmes and who, who were controlling and, and taking the ball and running and passing it and, and, and playing some good stuff. And you think, why? It, surely we can pick up a couple of players who can just put the foot on the ball and pass it and then move and take it again or just just control the ball, have it for maybe five or six, seven passes. I don't think I don't think we passed it in their half more than four or five times. Um, certainly controlled. Do you mean where it's like one and a move, move around? No, Preston has some really good stuff, and like it's just we just don't. We never, not necessarily just in the Preston game. We never seem to be able to do that. Every time we're in possession, it's so rushed, so panicked, yeah. and it's 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 reactive rather than any kind of like form of plan. And in that first half of Preston game, it was so evident. And do you mean it worked fine in the sense that we got going one up? But all Preston needs to do is just take a bit of calm. Do you know what I mean? Um, they won't worry about us having the ball because, like I said, we, we, we had the ball and we, we ended up doing I mean, that was why the, the first goal happened. But you, you, you absolutely nail on the head. It, that was the key, key problem in that game. And then obviously news filtering through with Norwich. Uh, David Wagner doing his best to relegate us 2-0 up at Hillsborough, 2-2. But yeah, you're you trying to take some positives out. And then just the whistle's gone. Chaos, uh, you know, we, we, I think everyone's just in a state of shock, really. I know we've seen that many defeats, we should be used to it now, but we were like, how oh, the hell have we lost 4 1 to? I mean, the guy got his hat chicken eight minutes, embarrassing. But like you say, we're talking, we made him look like Mbappe, and uh, yeah, so I'm kind of walking out the ground, and then all of a sudden there's a right carry on with uh, Delano Berg. So we might as well, you know, bring it up now and that. So I've got to be honest with this. I, I, again, I think it's where sometimes a, a video without any context can make him look bad. So what I saw was, and again, it's, it's where do you draw the line with stuff? Because, for example, Sober Thomas didn't even like clap. The, I think he might have just clapped their fans and he ran. Obviously, the tunnel's down the other end at Preston. He just went down the tunnel. A few of the fans, two of the players came to the halfway line, you know, kind of looked up and didn't do much and then just kind of walked off. But I'm always one of those, like, actions speak louder than words and stuff. Although, you know, I did get after Darren Moore, to be fair, when kind of he walked down the tunnel. I think the manager's got to show a bit more than that. But, 
the Bergsog thing was a bit of a strange one, really. So he came, he was the one that came up right to the away end, and he was kind of all his hands up. You do see this quite a lot uh, with kind of I've seen it in like Germany and another kind of kind of, kind of continental where it's like the they really do come up and like put their hands up because in Germany they've got standing from the fans. I saw Bayern Munich do it for a week, unbelievable when they got battered and they've got to face that humiliation with the fans. And obviously it's a bit different there because they kind of clap back and cheer back. But obviously the vitriol was big. And to be honest, there was some, you could hear some of the language on there and that as well. I didn't have any real issues with it, to be honest. I was quite, I thought Bergsorg, at least he, you know, kind of tried to you know, kind of, Put out a bonfire, really, yeah. and that as well. And if, if it had gone down the tunnel, being criticised for that. But obviously, this video's doing the rounds of people fighting them and stuff. And again, a couple of the players a bit like after yesterday's like we need to stick together. But yeah, I don't know, John. Do you have? Did you have any issues with the video? Because I mean, it's not a good look. But again, it just gives some of the meatheads the chance to fight into a player who's to me did more but, uh, on Tuesday I, to try and you know kind of get some I, points. I don't think there's anything wrong with this. Or- on either aspect, really. So Bergzog comes over and Bergzog apologises. Um, and then fans give off to him and have a go at him. Like, f- football's an emotional sport. Like, I, I'll be honest, I stopped watching after 3 1. I turned on the um, Arsenal Bayern Munich match instead. But I was fuming after the game. And if I'd have been at the game, I'd have probably been shouting all sorts at the players because it's an emotional sport. You know, that's the reason that we love football because it gets you really high and it gets you really low. So it's. You know, the, everybody criticises the fans and stuff for booing and and whatever. And, you know, I don't think booing during a match is conducive to a, um, a good result or whatever. But, it, you know, we've been watching some of the worst football that I've seen since I've been supporting this club for the past two years. So passions are going to spill over from time to time. And, you know, I don't see anything wrong with what Bergsorg did. I don't know what people were shouting to him. I couldn't make it out from the video. But if people are having a go at him, they're fair enough because there's been plenty of times this season where he's not been good enough. But at least he fronted up to it and at least he accepted it. Um, there's, as you say, there's other players who don't come down and they don't take the medicine and stuff. But I think all of this, I mean, it, if you were asked to put together all the ingredients of a relegation season, right, they, they'd be there. You know, you just, for yesterday, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you, you know, you're drawing one all away at a team who were going for the playoffs, and you've played relatively well, to be honest. You gave away a dodgy penalty from a, a, a mistake, and then you can see three goals in you know the time it takes to watch an advert, and <laughs> then a player comes over and he starts arguing with the the fans, and then the penalty that we'll come on to later happens against us. So if if you put in everything together, this is what happens in a relegation season. So it's only to be expected, you know. But I, I say, I, I, I don't see any issue with it. don't see any issue with Berg's or reacting. I don't see any issue with people having a go. It's it's a, an emotional sport and emotions took over in that in that instance. Johnny and Josh, much of a story, a non-story. We, did you have any, much? much I, 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 I was there and I'd left before um, the rap and current. I mean, a few players came over. I stayed for a decent amount of time. It looked like all the players were turning around and going, really. So I, I didn't see that part. Um, I... I'm not going to name names, but there were a couple of players who struck a few hands and kind of like saw, looked and saw town players coming over to clap and then just turned around and walked off. So I'd always rather someone player come up. Um, I don't think he did it in a in an aggressive way. I think he he was basically kind of the general message was, was look, try and stay and say with his like stay calm. Do you know what I mean we're working? Um, okay, if some people are swearing at you and shouting in your face, you, you might use slightly different words to that effect. But that that was a message you're trying to put across. I, like John said, I'd much rather a player come round and show some passion, and even if he ends up kicking off, then just turn around and, and walk away, which a few players did. I'm not going to name them, but a few of them did that. Um, so I have no problem with it. I, do, I don't think um, that instance, that particular uh, confrontation was, was that bad, really. I think it's a bit of passion. It's a player trying to say, look, we understand. We're working hard, and fans are obviously upset. Um, and I think he, he, he given he's got people swearing at him and shouting in his face. I think he took it quite well as well. I think, I think he, he he kept relatively calm in the situation. So to me, he got put on by second tier and it should try to kind of get a bit of spark of flame of fans shouting at a player and a player kicking off back. It, it wasn't that at all from, from what I saw from the year. That's not, yeah. say I wasn't there at that point in time, um, but I, I certainly didn't take it in that way. I just think it's a bit of passion. I'd rather have someone fighting than people just walking off and not looking asked. Josh? Yeah, I agree. I don't think there's much to it, to be honest. It's one of them. You've been beat 4-1. 
passions are in high, people are pissed off, players are probably pissed off and upset. It's just one of them. It, as long as note was said that's well out of order, then it's you know what I mean it's one of them. It's just passions are in high, isn't it? So we drive home uh, from Preston. We're still not in the bottom three, but we know Birmingham are playing Cardiff on Wednesday, and we expect Birmingham being at home to drop us in the bottom three. Lo and behold, Birmingham nil, Cardiff City one, and. Honestly, it's the up that just really kills you in this spot, isn't it? And that as well. So we uh, we head to Bristol. The, the one thing that, honestly, I did a, a podcast like I do every Thursday with like the other Yorkshire teams. Obviously, the guy from Rotherham, Matt, is, you think we've got problems. Honestly, he just, he tipped Blackburn to beat Leeds. When, like, I can't wait till Thursday's show, to be honest with you. Because he just threw it in as a rabbit. It's a banana. <laughs> it's it's a yeah, honestly, it's incredible. I don't know if he had a bet on it. <coughs> racing, but I, I tipped us to lose four. No, I just... Mentally, the collapse, I honestly couldn't see how Brighton Wright could get as a tune out of his team. And obviously, Bristol City beat Blackburn 5 This is where the championship just like blows your head off because Bristol City beat Blackburn 5 0. We've been absolute battered, you know, in half an hour uh, by Preston. And you're thinking there's only one way it's going to go on Saturday and that as well. And uh, yeah, we'll come on to the, obviously the, the game now where. You know, I think we played the same formation. I've got down here 4 4 one 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 made two changes, which were quite surprising, to be honest with you, because Tom Lees and Jack Rodoni were, sounds like as well, after the game, that I don't think they should have played. Uh, they weren't fit, but obviously, Brighton Writers knows it's such a massive game and it's almost like, oh, let's do it. We need freshening up. The, the things that I, I kind of was interested in the press conference, it was like, we need fresh players, we need freshening up. So putting that together and... and and then what happened on Tuesday night and, and the fact Bristol City come back with a 5-0 win, the performance that we put in were quite unbelievable. Obviously, we'll, we'll kind of go through it in order, really, and that as well. But uh, obviously, Rebecca Welsh is going to play a lot of part in this uh, discussion as well. But I suppose, as we started, honestly, just watching it back, then, Bristol City offered nothing in the first half. And even though town, I didn't feel were like, Typical town, it was very slow, but we looked solid. We didn't look a team scarred by it, which were quite shocking as well. This is what I don't get. It's how, how can you have that? And then just like players if were playing with freedom and that as well. It was just weird. I, I just think, Cosy, just just on that, um, you know, that, that Preston result, I know it looks really, really bad. I'm not going to stand here and tell everyone that it was a good result. But I, I think you can compartmentalise that as a coach. I really do. I think you can say, look, we played well for 55 minutes we didn't play well for the last half hour but we held in there and then on the 83rd 84th minute Brighton Wright made subs to you know um, bring on strikers and change the game you know we went for a win and we lost the game 4-1 so I think you can compartmentalise that a little bit so I'd, I, I know as us as fans it looks absolutely dreadful but I think he'll have been able to say to him, look, you know, we played well for such and such. Now we can go to Bristol. They're not as good as Preston. And we can go out there. If we execute the game plan better, then we can win the game. And I think that's kind of I think that's kind of the attitude that we went into the game with. We did the first half. I've not got much written down, to be honest with you. There was a, a Thomas. Thomas, again, it's incredible to hear people say that it shouldn't be in the team. Honestly, I know a few people who shouldn't be in the team. Without him, mate, we'd be like Rotherham United. We'd have been down <laughs> a few weeks ago. But yeah, put Bergsorg in, they were a bit like a, a bit of a collision. But again, I just saw a bit more of a braver Bergsorg, a bit more of a team Bergsorg, in my opinion, this game and that as well. And then all of a sudden, Brother Spencer just appeared from nowhere on the back of a Thomas Cross shot. And I don't know what you thought, but I thought that the Bristol guys thought it were like a really good chance. I mean, obviously, he's not known for his goals. Chance. It's one of them. I think it, it, you don't know whether he's seen it a bit later or not, but he's got there, hasn't he? That's the thing, he's got, he's, he's got on to end of it. I think it's a really good chance. I just think he's either missed time Z or he's probably not expecting it to get through to him. It's a great late run into box and I just think he's mm. got to do better with it. I think it's a really good chance from what, were he five yard out, six yeah. yard out? You bought, yeah, I mean, to, not, to not put it on mm. target, it's a bit. It's one of them where you sort of just think, is it going to be our day or not? It's just, uh, it's one of them, it's not It's not the greatest setup. Whether, like I say, whether he's just seen it late, it's come over the top of a defender, you, you don't really know. It's like I say, only he can answer that, but I think it's a, I think it was a good chance. He bought, and Johnny, coming up, Josh Grumman seemed to get his mojo back. Uh, I think he played well on Tuesday. I, thought, I think the goal, he's a bit of a confidence guy, isn't he, and that as well, and there was that kind of that chance of the first time. It was a difficult one. He, he kind of couldn't get it uh, out under his feet, really, and that as well, and slashed it wide, but I just thought anything we did well yesterday, we'll, we'll come on to his I've got written down here that scorpion kick. Was it Giroud? Or, well, it was Giroud, wasn't it? Giroud, yeah, yeah. Giroud, wasn't it? Yeah, but he's such a, a player in 
Burnson did just Corona Johnny. I suppose he wouldn't be at Uddersfield if he kind of did it week in, week out. But again, I thought, obviously, we'll come on to the goal, Molly, if you want to come on to it now, to be honest, mate. But I thought anything good up, up top, mate, we're all pretty much to, to do with him, really. Yeah, I agree. Um, he, he, like the chance you're referring to there, where he kind of doesn't quite get into it, and it's, it's really good run. He breaks well. It's a good run for him to even make, make the opportunity to kind of receive the ball as well. And um, it's what we've known about Chroma for a while, isn't it? He, he, he kind of starts to kind of not be not really be in games and not really take his chances or kind of he never shies away from the ball, but his impact on on the match isn't necessarily always there. But then he comes out of it and he has a he does have a like say like a purple patch, like I say, he's obviously a form player, confidence player. If he wants to have, do you know what I mean, a purple patch in the last three games, it would be useful. But I mean, two in two, he's kind of can't ask much more than that. Um, the goal again, it's it's a little bit fortunate, um, I guess, from where is it Rodoni plays it in and it kind of comes off a bristle play and falls to him, but yeah. it's a really good finish. Um, he, he, it's it's all right to say it's easy. It fell with him, but as much as do you know what I mean, he he wasn't expecting the ball to come to that. He's taken a ricochet. He's readjusted. He's, he's put his foot through it well, and it, it's gone in. Um, so yeah, it, it's a good goal. Um, but I thought we played really well. In the first half, um, Bristol didn't have a shot, so that's that's really impressive from a time perspective. I thought we I thought we pressed really well. There were quite a few times where we've intercepted the ball with a press, and it's it's we've turned it around quickly and actually be able to find a few passes as well. Which we didn't do in the pressing game. Um, I mean, it's not it's not to get too excited. Passing wasn't amazing still, but we've actually done. We have improved. Maybe that's like what John was saying. It's the fact that we've looked. We've been able to look at the pressing game and say, look, um, we've been lucky to, to let unlucky in, in, in regards to the Matos goal. It's not worked. So let's put it to bed and, and move on because there's clearly no hangover. Um, the whole players were brave in what they were trying to do. Um, it didn't look like a team that were desperate for points. With I mean, with four now three games left and and, and struggling, it looked like a team that. Had a bit about them, had confidence, and, and they grew into the game. Um, and I thought I thought we played really well, um, and I thought we deserved to get something out of it. I think other than the point, the only thing we can really take out of it is the fact that the team's not, I mean, it's not gone. They've clearly got still that confidence in themselves. If they do play like that, there are points to be had um, in the games that we've got left. Um, because I thought I thought it was a really good a really good showing. It was, and uh, Cameron Pring was the guy who uh, deflected the shot in in, uh, in the path of Corona. And yeah, there's no point holding back from it now. Let, let's get to the, the subject matter at uh, yesterday. That I, I honestly thought we'd be going down to ten or nine men early on. The, the, the cast that came out quickly for Spencer and Matos was <laughs> after seven and, and twelve minutes and that as well. I mean, I, I think the Matos one was you know maybe fair enough, but Spencer one seemed a little bit harsh, but. The one thing that, that kind of concerned me with Rebecca Welsh like early on was just the quickness of just like how the cards came out. There were no like kind of let's just let's have a little think or assess on that as well. It was proper like, which obviously when we'll get into to the penalty now, but it was just, I think just having a look, I think she averages like four bookings a game and she hardly averages any red cards and that as well. But I mean, I don't, I don't even know where to start with the goal, Josh, but... It's incredible, mate. I mean, you, it's only other sort of town where you could possibly get this, probably. You've got the guy who, one of the penalties that gets us into the Premier League, sends the penalty past the Nichols to maybe get us back into League One, which he tried, you know, he, he played a big part in, like, you know, trying to get us up the other way. You've got, I mean, I suppose, before we come on the penalty, 90 plus... Five minutes were added on. I mean, we do, let's be honest, we do shit house, we do waste time. We've done it, we, we do it a lot. So, coming to you, Josh, do you think, I mean, I, the first time looking at this time business, there's, there's quite a difference of opinions from a lot of town fans, journalists. Some people said, fair enough, I didn't have any issues with the time. Well, it's minimum, no, it's Matt, minimum if, time know, added, isn't it? So it's, yeah, it's I know, Matt, 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 were very, Matt, if Matt were here, he were very oh. vocal on it on our internal communication channel. Did you have an issue with that we were playing? 11 minutes on the I mean, it all, it all depends on how how the referee determines is the extra five minutes. There were one, what was the one sub in extra time? So, what's that, an extra, an extra minute? And then, I, I don't think we, there was much, there were, we were many injuries laying down on the floor that for that long to, to warrant that amount of time being added on. Um, so, yeah, that, that's one question. <laughs> that's one question from the start before you even get onto the decision of the penalty. But, like I say, I think the I think that's where everyone sort of does differ. It is minimum 
in it, that that's the that's the problem. It's not five. It's not ninety five and blow your whistle. So it totally depends mm. on what Rebecca Welsh thought was the adequate amount of time to add on. I guess. Johnny, do you have any issues with Oli Turton being brought on? I, you know what? I, I've kind of got a little bit more of a different opinion than, than last night. I, I turning your back and this, that, and the other. But I've just looked at it again today. And this bollocks. Never mind turning your back and you know in being match fit. Apparently, we're apologising in the dressing room, but. It's just bollocks, mate. And it, it, there's no point looking for. I mean, they were saying. I read a Bristol uh, piece on that as well. That because I looked at the, a couple of the guys did appeal for the penalty at their end, and the guy, uh, I forgot his name, Cameron Pring, who you know uh, set up our goal. He apparently said to their manager it was a definite penalty, but it was never a penalty in a million years, mate. What it? No, it's it's, it's not a penalty. Um, I mean. In situations like this, I guess I'll, I'll go out to a few people, a couple of them Leeds fans, and ask ask what they think because they're not going to give you a blue <laughs> and white true. perspective, are they? And I've not found anyone other than someone who's trying to wind me up, anyone who who, who thinks it's a pen. Um, even if you flick through the Bristol forum, um, which I've just done then because Googling to see which game it was Rebecca Welsh refed as at home, which I equally think the referee, irrespective of agenda, was was poor in that game. Um, and it, it comes up with the Bristol form, I've just had a flick through, and even even they're saying that, I mean, it was harsh, they'll take it as you do, but it was harsh. Um, so it's absolutely categorically not not a pen. I'm not even going to give it the airtime to run through the reasons why I think it is, it's just not. But going back to your point on Turton. No, I, I don't think so. Because if you actually look at the defending in, in that piece there before um, the decision, uh, in, he, 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 he's good, he's sharp. He, he's, 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 tracking in, he's tracking in the man. He passes the man over. He gets out quickly to, to stop the cross, um, which is good. He stops the cross. Um, okay, it does hit his elbow, but it, I mean, his body is behind that. It's not a pen. So, so no, he's, he's done absolutely nothing wrong. Um, he doesn't necessarily even turn his back. He's still side on. He, he, even if he goes front on, he probably his arm's still there. So it probably makes the exact same impact given the distance. So I don't think you could even be that critical to kind of tell I me mean, what could you do next time to, to prevent the referee having to make the decision. There isn't there isn't a lot there. So I I, I don't have an issue with with um, bringing Turton on. Um, I think if you hadn't, someone else would still be there blocking that, or, or they failed to block the cross. Had they failed to block the cross, maybe it wouldn't have been a pen. But you you can't blame that for him. I think his defending that situation is is how it is how it should be really. Um, the it's time. just an awful, awful plus, decision. Plus eleven, mate. Did you have an issue with it? Time. You... Um, it's one of them. It's one of them where, by all accounts, again, I wasn't. I, I didn't watch the highlights. I wasn't at the game. I didn't. I didn't watch the game. Um, there's a few comments from people um, in the Bristol forum say about time waste stuff like that. Um, and I think from 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 reading um, Stephen Chicken's five conclusions, he touches on the fact that there was there was quite a bit of stoppages in those five minutes with substitutions and a free kick from town. So it's one of them. Do you know what I mean, if you're adding time while you're adding time on, um, and, then, and then obviously it, it looks worse because the goals are whatever it is, 10, 11, but then the penalty takes, no doubt, took a minute, minute and a half to take it. So it's one of them where I was watching it on, on flash scores thinking it's eight, nine, Saying in my kitchen, what on earth are we doing here? But it's you don't know, dear. And if you you are adding time on, to me, town slide it in when they're gift to defend in those minutes. And it, 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 if we conceded, it's maybe you might have been a bit more annoyed at it. But it's one of them where if the time, if, if those extra time, if those extra times minutes weren't weren't in, in play, then fair enough. But what I don't understand is, I'd love someone to explain this to me if that over over forty five minutes we've accrued five or six minutes. How how then in in six minutes do we accrue a further five? That's what I never get because they always seem to they always seem to add on. We've got to play a full six minutes. If the ball stops, we've got to play six minutes. But we don't play that for the for the forty five, the two forty fives half. So why do we do it in the extra time? That's the only thing I would say. But my issue is more with the penalty than the than the time. John, you couldn't make it up, could you? Because like Brian Brown was saying in his press conference on Friday, mentioned them three audible letters that still. Answers from Nottingham Forest V and A and an R, and obviously we're referring to the fact that yeah, you know Matt's got some of the ball on Tuesday. But I think uh, I actually thought she'd blown for full time. The, the, you know, she were kind of like, and then he's got the ball, and Naki Wells. I'm thinking you're having the eyes out here, and he'd like give it. But what were your instant thoughts, mate, when you kind of saw it unfolding? Just like this is just destined for League One on a short term. Yeah, I mean, so I was. I was kind of saying to you before the the podcast started. I was texting my friends. So I was watching it on a stream, and just to go back to the to the added time, 
I am that sad person that records like how long people are down. And Michael Halleck was down for a minute and 51 seconds. At the, literally at the beginning of extra time. Their player <laughs> was down for 50 seconds. And then there was another 30 seconds worse. So I have no issue with the extra time. The, the penalty was given in the 98th minute. Play 98 minutes because we've we've time wasted. I was actually texting my friend and I said, Helix has been, been down for nearly two minutes here. What is he playing at? Like it's, They're just going to add it all on. He said, oh, they, he's killing the momentum of the game. Well, there was no momentum. Bristol City had no momentum. So that, that, that's all our issue. That's all I'd say on that. Um, but anyway, my friend was a couple of minutes ahead of me and he texted me and he said, uh, that's classic time. We've given away a penalty. And I was watching it. I was thinking, oh my God, I've given away a penalty. No. So I turned my phone off, just kept watching the stream. And when the penalty was given... I thought this can't be it. This, this actually can't be the minute, the, the moment the penalty is given away because it didn't look one to me at all. The, the the only thing I will say is that from the the very first minute, I felt like uh, the referee was refing it as if as if she was a Premier League referee. So does the yellow card for Spencer, the yellow card for Matos. It was they were very Premier League yellow cards, and that handball is the most Premier League handball uh, that I've ever seen. I was mentioning uh, again before the pod. The, the Bournemouth, the, the penalty that Manchester United got yesterday, it bounced off one player and then it literally hit Adam Smith on the shoulder and his shoulder was next to his arm. I mean, how that's a penalty, I do not know. But it, it just felt like such a Premier League decision. And the thing that it doesn't really... Of course, it annoys me that we, we conceded, but the, the thing that annoys me the most about this is Oli Turton's been out injured for... I don't know. It feels like Oli Turton's been out injured since before COVID. He's been injured months, over again. Man. 14 months. 14 months. And he's had such wretched luck. And then he's crying in the changing room. And it's, it, you know, it's not the fact that we could get relegated by two points, which we, you know, we probably will do. But that poor lad has put in so much effort to get back playing football. And he's in tears because the referee's made a, a dreadful decision that she didn't need to make. She did not need to make. She could have just taken a minute. I think the linesman was a bit a bit close as well. How quick did she get it? She was so close as well. If you look at back, she's just staring directly at it. Yeah. And she gives she gives that penalty. It strikes me as line from or something, man, you know? It it strikes me as the and I hate when I say stuff like this. I play football every week but to a very, very, very bad level. A terrible level. But you can tell with some of the referees some of the referees have played football and then some of the referees, some of the younger referees just clearly have never played football and they're sort of the letter of the law. Oh yeah, that's a handball, that's a handball. But but they've got no situational awareness. I don't know if Rebecca Walsh has played football, but from judging some of her decisions, she's not. And it just, but I, I went back to it. It's, it's all the ingredients for a relegation season. And we, we conceded that penalty. You knew Naki Wells was going to score, even though he probably should have booted it over the stands. <laughs> <laughs> you know, do us all a favour. Yeah. Uh, but then uh, I opened the Sky Sports up and I checked all the other results. I just thought, well, that's it. It looks like a relegation, smells like a relegation. It is a relegation. Honestly, I think that body blow on uh, detail on Tuesday were bad. I mean, to come back from this, it's, it's going to take something else. Josh, just, I suppose it doesn't really matter, does it? But obviously, Brighton and Wright run about bad and stuff. I, I'm not convinced. I think the trouble is you see a lot of this stuff now where a ref, is, the difference is it's like when it's not given and then the ref goes to the screen and then can overturn yeah. it, then gives it. But the fact that she gave it, I'm unconvinced yeah. that she'd have gone to that screen and, and it's got to be like, it. And it got to be sort of clear and obvious to over, overturn yeah. it. So I oh, think even yeah, if you have yeah. it, I don't think it's been overturned. I think the thing for me is, it's like, well, like Johnny, Johnny and John have both said, it's how, one, I don't know what Ollie Turton's supposed to do. I don't know where he's supposed to go. He's dived in, his arm's not flailing out here. It's not like that. It, he's been hit. The guy's hit a ball at him from about three or four yards, like three yards away. So I don't know where he can go. And two, it's how quickly she's made that decision in at that point of a game. And I think, it, like I say, it just comes down to experience and things like that. It's been a rapid rise up for her, hasn't it? Really? I think she only refed her first EFL game in 2001. And then 2003, she had a Premier League game and now around there. But you just think maybe like an ex, a bit more experienced ref looks at that and goes... I'm going to take my time here and judge whether this is a penalty. It's a big call. And it was just how quick she gets. She had to be, you have to be, a, I think I saw where it, I don't remember, I mean, like Keith Hackett or something said, something said, I saw something on Twitter where it's like, you've got to be 100% certain if you're giving that penalty. If you're not 100% certain that that's a penalty, if it's not clear as day that that's a penalty at that point of that game, you can't give the penalty. 
but she obviously she obviously thinks it is, and fair enough. It's a, it's yeah, you know I mean it's 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 her decision, isn't it? But from all the replays, because I think they say that in back in the changing room, right and right, I said they'd, they'd spoke they'd spoke to the referee and the assistants, and they're not allowed to look at the the replay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I yeah, mean, it's it's baffling, really, isn't it? When you come out, because realistically, if that. It, that hasn't that won't that's not what's relegated as if we do go down we've been crap all season but it's decisions like that and two points in this vital point of a season that can put you down you know what I mean it's it's now very much sort of it could it's a little bit more out of our hands now where if we win that game it's very much in our hands because you win your two home games you're safe yeah. and that, that's, doesn't... that's the problem I think that one doesn't do the whole thing any favors and I've, I've we've talked about this. I think it was last season. It's just the pure, it's the pure arrogance of the entire referee culture that yeah. you can see. You can see Hellick going up to her quite calmly. I mean, she's not going to change her mind at this no. point. I mean, say he points to his captain and she just goes, "Go away, go away, go away." And it's like it, it's not how you speak to people. And it's the fact that afterwards it's just radio silence. There's nothing. You've yeah. got. Do you know I mean Sky Sports putting it on? Kind of independent um, journalists putting it on on Twitter and et cetera. And it's just silence, nothing. We'll hear nothing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you're quite right, Josh. We'll point to that and say that's what relegated us, but it's not the case. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. There's, there's things we've had in our own ability to change that, yeah. but it is something that will hurt you. Um, and you get nothing. There's, there's, there's no accountability. Yeah. I'm not saying ref should be putting the camera in front of the camera after a game. And I don't think that's right. I don't think that's what they sign up to. But I said last season, there should be something where they have to do some form of report, which is paper-based, put on a website somewhere. And if you're sad enough as me, you can go and read it. Just to understand, either she can say, yeah, just say this what is what I thought. Yeah, this is what I thought. Saw. Yeah, un- after review, you know I mean? I've got one chance to see it, understand that. Um, I've, I, this is, I can see now I was wrong. Um, we take the learning. It's not going to change the result. So if we go down, we still yeah. go down. But at least you've got someone who, who's put like the likes of Turton professionally and the likes of us. So I mean, um, through years and years and years of supporting town, have got some to even just like okay, right. Well, at least she's admitted it because do you mean, the, we, we're way past twenty four hours, and I'm still fuming about this. Absolutely fuming about it. Yeah. Went to gym this morning, mate. Said Are you over the penalty. I just went no. Don't even start because it, there's just nothing. And the person who's done it. I'm not saying she's not going to be beating herself up. I mean, sat at home doing what she's doing now, but there's just no accountability towards it whatsoever. And the radio silence is what annoys me the most. People will make mistakes. It's sport. We're humans. Fair enough. We've seen to have had a bad run in them over the last two years, not to repeat to I mean, what happened in, at Wembley. But just the fact there's just nothing there. We don't get to see. They'll discuss it. They'll have an opinion on it. But we, we as fans are invested in this. This is what football is about. And it just seems so unfair that, it's just that's it. Decision made. Move on. You, you've got to forget about it. Well, I don't think that's right. That's just I th- I, I, the board, isn't it for me? You mean you look at did did Rov, did Rotherham get one the other day against him against West Brom where he basically <laughs> Lee Belgian that, that, like that made it look a stone waller yesterday. Josh did that. Do, do, you know, do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's just ridiculous. But like you say, it's like Johnny said there. No one's come out even after that and said I made a horrible decision. I'm sorry. And that's all you need. like. No, it's not going to change anything. But at least, at least you can say, look, bad decision. We all make them. I'm sorry. Yeah, we can be pissed off with it. But at least they've held their old hands up. But it's not. It's just it's iron curtain down, isn't it? No, we're not going to say out about it. John. You're not going to get that, are you? I mean, I watched, no, you're not, I watched, no. I watched that by me in the dorm again the other week, and they had the referee interviewed after the game, which were quite refreshing. You wouldn't talk in German, so I don't have a clue what I'm saying. But <laughs> the, the, the part of the matter is that the front note, but. Like I yeah. said, just even if she'd have come on though and yesterday said, Oh, I've made a balls yeah. or whatever, I don't, it wouldn't have mattered to me, mate, because I'd have been yeah, still, but you know, it's just, but I know what still, you mean. We can still be angry, but at least someone's owned yeah. up to a mistake in it. That's the, that's the problem. But... I, th- I, I think there's a real crisis of, um, I, I could talk about this all night. I think there's a real crisis of officiating in this country. I've seen a lot of stuff on, on Twitter last night that was just, quite frankly, misogynistic about this referee. Uh, I, I don't think it's got anything to do with agenda. The, the standard that. of refereeing in this country is abysmal. That penalty that we're, that um, Rotherham conceded the other day where the guy handballed it five yards outside the box. West Brom again, where who was it? Yeah, where, the West Brom player literally punched the ball over the, over the crossbar. And then you've got some of the absolute shambolic decisions that are going on in the, in, in the Premier League. And things that don't help for me are... You know, I've watched a couple of Premier League games this season, and a decision's been given or not given, and they go to Mike Riley or Dermot Gallagher in the studio, and they just come out and automatically agree with the referee. 
and then later on they'll change their mind. So there's there's just ambiguity all the time. Nobody knows what's happening. Um, and I was again I was saying to you guys beforehand. I, I I feel like I I don't know the rules of football anymore. It's because it's not as black and white as it used to be. It's you know if somebody could come out, you know Howard Webb or whoever whoever's head of the frigging referees could come out and say and just give us a reason why that was a penalty, and they they could stand on TV and just gaslight everyone. It's kind of like the um the the, the thing that I go back to with the bloody um, Arsenal Newcastle earlier in the season, um that Newcastle goal that was the ball was the ball was out. And then the ball was crossed in and um, Gabriel was fouled in the middle. And then the fellow who tapped in was offside. So there are three reasons why the goal should have been um, disallowed. And then a couple of days later on TV, you have Gary Neville and everyone just coming on TV and saying, oh, well, the ball actually wasn't out and it wasn't a foul. And it was, you know, what, what is going on? Like Refereeing is just, it, there's, there's a crisis in it at the moment. It's just... Honestly, I could talk about this all night. It just really winds me up. <laughs> John, I think, it's, I, think there is, I think there is a real problem, but I think I think to a certain extent we are to blame because I, again, I was chatting about this. Um, referees have been a major topic in our WhatsApp groups at the moment, and I think ultimately, if you've got more, it's like to become a football is really hard because you've got everyone. Most most children want to do it. You've got massive, ma- massive, big pool of people to pick from, and only the best get get through. So the quality is really high. <laughs> refereeing why do you want to do it because if you're getting to league one championship level you've started on a park refereeing john during at sunday league and i'm sure john's perfectly pleasant to referees but i'm sure he's seen no, i have <laughs> the the attitude and, and referees getting knocked out getting punched getting hit and this is at like children's games so uh, fair enough you might be professional you're getting a reasonable salary in the premier league and championship but you're not in the east main you're not kind of county league football, you're certainly not Sunday league. You're doing it for 50 quid. Well, I'm not doing that. I'm not getting knocked out 50 quid. Sod that, I'll move on. So you've got, you've got, you ask yourself, who are these people who are, who are starting getting knocked out on a Sunday and then making it to the championship? It, the, the, the pool's not there. So inherently, the, the culture towards referees is to, more, I think, to, to blame because the, the attractiveness to go and do that as a job it isn't really there. Uh, and, and and it's how we change that really. So you, you you're attracting more referees to the game. Therefore, you can choose what referees you've got. And then the re- elite referees at the top level are going to be better because more people want to do it. Whilst he's, he's just getting dogged abuse, ninety minutes. At least you might be getting ninety grand in the Premier League, but you're not in the National League South. You're not. Do you know what I mean county level football? So Johnny, so people just won't do level, it. At our level, Johnny, obviously Bundesliga two have got far. I mean, much has been made about the repression thing about the championship when someone scores, you know it's a goal and, you know, we can celebrate and none of that. The people love that. But obviously, and, and as, I suppose it's, we're coming from, we, I suppose we can talk about it both ways, Cap, we've seen the forest thing where it didn't get given and we've seen, obviously, yesterday we saw that you know, on Tuesday, is it a matter of taking rough smooth or would you bring in Varmint? The money's surely got to be there. Do it second tier football, mate. So the other mm. critics will be like, well, you're going to be third tier anyway, so it don't matter. But I think, would you bring it in, mate? Would you bring it in? Yeah. The cost, I think, Price Football, Price Football covered this in the last episode of episode four. I think he said it costs about £3 million a year, um, which isn't isn't nothing for the Premier League, but it's a little bit more for us. But would I do it? I don't know, because even though this might count, counter our argument as to whether it's penalty or not, I agree with what Josh said there. I think if VAR looked at that, under the current rules of VAR, I don't think they'd overturn it. I don't think they'd say no, it's I a don't. clear and obvious error because it hits his hand. The interpretation of the rules it should be that it's not a penalty, but is it clear and obvious? So my issue, I wouldn't take VAR now because I don't think VAR is being used properly. Uh, and I think the, the, the rules where you can look at something and can't look at something are ridiculous. And when you can overturn it, can't overturn it. I, I think VAR should be very, very simple. You should have someone watching watching it, to mean, back at Stockley Park, wherever they're doing it. And they'll say, they'll be able to see that and think, that's controversial. That that might not be. You might not have seen that exactly how I've seen it. Go have a look at it. So Rebecca can go over and have a look at it. She can see it again because she's made a decision fast. If she then turns around and says, right, I've watched that. It's still a pen. Right, okay, fair, fine, carry on. She then has an opportunity to look at it and say, right, now I've seen it again from this angle and I've seen it a little bit slower. Um, I don't want it to be a pen, overturn it. That It's simple. That's how VAR should be used. But at the moment, the rules are so weird about how, when and where we use VAR and if the ref's in it, you can't do it. And when he can you rescind a red? Why? Just give it as an option that the ref can go, that's happened really quickly. I think I've seen what I've seen. 
Can I go look at a video? Can I see one or two replays? Because that's all we do when we see it on TV and you quite quickly form an opinion. So allow a professional to, to do that without these rules and regulations around it. And you won't get masses of stoppages every game because it's big decisions. And ref just go, look, I just want two minutes to look at it again. And that's what happens in other sport. I just don't get why we've, we've made it so complicated. But to answer your question in a long way, as it is now, no, because I don't see the benefit to it. Um, but if they change the rules of VAR, then yeah, absolutely, because it's nothing worse than having decisions go against it, which which have massive impact. One that's going to run and run, and obviously the whistle blows eventually, what's it, about half past eight at night, and we've lost 2-1 at... So it was all we had lost, we've, uh, we felt like I lost, in it? Yeah, uh, it did. We've gone all at Bristol City, so... At this point, we'll just take a break where I, me and Matt talk about McDonald's, which uh, is probably a lot better than talking about VAR. So we'll just play for an advert. And we're back. And now before we uh, talk about the relegation conundrum, uh, myself and John, obviously on the back of two great wins against Killer, we had to, well, Matt, not only uh, had to bring others into play, I'd probably had a bit, a bit more knowledge than Killer. So... It's Cozzy versus the world. When are we going to hold this bold man responsible? Okay, thank you, future Matt. We've taken Cozzy versus the world on tour. And first up on tour, we have John McNamara, a.k.a. Bloggy Potter from Terrier Blog from Hogwarts. How are we doing, John? Not bad, thanks, Matt. How are you? Good, good, good. What have you been up to since uh, Terrier Blog uh, finished? You've uh, you've slackened off with the old quill and ink, haven't you? I know, yeah. I, I took off social media for a while because it was toxic, and uh, I've come back on social media now and uh, just chipping in every once in a while. But um, I'm trying to stay away from it because just watching town just makes me so angry. I just want to tweet like um, abuse and s- <laughs> offensive stuff every time we play. <laughs> Fantastic, and you're now living over in Northern Ireland, giving me tree advice on WhatsApp, aren't you? which is very. Yeah, I'm indeed. Yeah. yeah. Very Seventy good. pound awesome. bill. That. <laughs> exactly. Cozzy, you're here to uh, take your knowledge on tour. But it's not you who gets to decide. How come, though? You... That I'm getting mad about this. Why can't I pick one for one smart? Because you choose Spain every time and you dick whoever it is. <laughs> That's what. <But> no, <laughs> yeah, it's always, always the guest. <laughs> oh, always the okay. guest. Okay, okay, so, John, okay. you can pick from Spanish football. Hey. German Absolutely football. not. Hey. Champions League, English football in the tens, on, on and then Italian football, the Euros, so English football in the ten. Oh, World oh. Cup, English football in the nineties. Oh no, the England national team, or English football in the noughties. The choice is yours. I'm going to go English football in the noughties because I would have been about, I don't know, 12 to 17, 18, 19 in the noughties, so my knowledge should be good. Your Northern Ireland accent's coming on, you know. I can hear it. Is it really? Oh, my God. Bit, a little bit. Hear it, Noy. Such a Martin, Martin, <laughs> sort it out, Noy. Come on, Martin. Right, okay. Right. England in the noughties. Right, so rock, paper, scissors on a count of three to see who goes first. Cosy, are you ready for a rock, paper, scissors? On three, on to the, up to the camera. Rock, paper, scissors. One, two, three, go. Right, okay, so Cozzy's going for a scissor in. And, uh, yeah. Potter. Potter. Okay, so round one, let this go commence. So <laughs> it's going to be Bloggy Potter versus Lord Voldemort. And here we go. Question one. So how this works, John, is I ask you a question. You can choose an easy one or a hard one. You get two points. Two points for... A hard, hard question, if you answer it correctly. One point for an easy one, if you answer that correctly. And there are no rebounds in this. So, first question. Let me just make sure I've not asked this before. Nope. So, first question for you, John. Easy or hard? 
I'm going to go hard, straight out of the box. Confidence. Cocky or what? I know. This Turkish fan favourite... good lead. This Turkish fan favourite with the Middlesbrough faithful was named their Player of the Year in 2009 with a whopping 75% of the votes. He was also known for his beautiful goals, winning the Goal of the Month competition twice during his time in the league. Who is he? Sanli Tunchai. It is Sanli Tunchai. Bloody hell. 2-0 to Potter. Jeez. There we go. Cozzy, you're under pressure already. Straight straight into a kissing. (laughs) (laughs) I'm up as one of the town tech lead at half time and then blow it later on. <laughs> Are you going easy or hard, Cos? I'm going to go easy, mate. Easy now, says the Cos. Built some confidence. I'm uh, reeling okay. from a defeat on last week and now two down. It's quite an easy one as well. This Spanish midfielder was picked up by Everton as a replacement for Thomas Graveson in 2005. He was named the club's best player in his first two seasons at Goodison Park. Is it Arteta? It is Mikel Arteta. That's 2-1 to Mr. Potter. One easy though, that, was it? No, not really. One easy one, that, mate. Easy or hard, John, for penalty two? We'll go hard again. Hard again. Oh, John, stick it nice in, isn't it? This goalkeeper with 514 games in the Premier League is Australia's most experienced player in England. The vast majority of these games were played as Middlesbrough and then Fulham's number one, while during the sunset of his career, he filled the backup keeper role for first Chelsea and then subsequently Leicester City. Who am I? Mark Schwarzer. It is Mark Schwarzer. It's four for Potter, one for the Bear. The Invisible Bear. Right it's not my phone and I can't see you. But can you see me? Nope. No, I've moved. Cosy in the dark and also in the mud. Oh, <laughs> on the Cosy, are you going easy or hard? I'm going to go hard. It's, it's proper smash me here. Okay, Cosy needs needs some points back. I can't see anyone. It's all going wrong here. <laughs> this Finnish central defender made the PFA Premier League Team of the Year twice in the course of his career. In his native Finland, he was named Player of the Year an incredible 10 times and ended up leaving his beloved Liverpool in favour of Bayer Leverkusen in 2009. That's actually quite easy, isn't it? Yeah, Sammy Hippier. Uh, it is indeed Sammy Hippier. So, 4-3. Yeah. Cosy, I scored him. Where are you? I scored him. Oh, I was struggling with that one. 4-3. Right, oh, yeah, there we go. There hey. it is. There's uh, Okay, John, it's 4 3. Question 3. Are you going easy or hard? I'm going to go hard again. Clean sweep. Hard again. Hard again. <laughs> hard again. <laughs> this Bolton legend was appointed captain in 2009 after Kevin Nolan's departure. Before becoming an aggressive striker under Sam Allardyce at Bolton, he had made a name for himself as a skilled and intelligent player at Chesterfield, Southampton, and at Blackburn. And at Blackburn, that actually signed him in a club record transfer in 1998. That season, the Rovers got relegated, and this striker was transferred back to the South Coast. He's a B Tech. He's a B Tech Andy Booth, Kevin Davis. It is Kevin Davis. That's six three. Cosy. Got no choice, have I? Got a go. It's a tough question. <laughs> Cosy's Cause, frozen as well. Smart, yeah. Oh, there he is. He's back. He's back. Right, it's a hard one. This Dutchman scored a penalty in Middlesbrough's League Cup triumph in two thousand and four. The player who moved to the Riverside from Chelsea played for some of Europe's biggest clubs, such as PSV, Barcelona and Liverpool. During his impressive career, he also played 54 games for the Netherlands. I know this one. Actually, no, I don't think it's easy, this one, because Actually, no, I don't. I got that wrong. Oh, shit. So this guy is X. Who did he play for? Middlesbrough, yeah, Middlesbrough, and he played for Liverpool. I think he played for Liverpool as well. Is it rising at that? I don't think it is, is but it? I'm going to... I don't know, I guess. Uh, is he a bit of a bozo? He is, yeah. Who? There you go. He's a bit of a bozo. It's Cozzy. It's Cozzy out. It's Cozzy. 
Yeah, it's not Reisiger, mate. I'm not. It's oh, not it's, cool, is it? It's Budavine, isn't it? Budavine's ending. Well, it's ending, yeah. Oh, so they were right back. No, 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 no. It said this Dutchman scored a penalty Middlesbrough's League Cup triumph. The player who moved to the Riverside from Chelsea played for some of Europe's biggest clubs, such as PSV, Barcelona, and Liverpool. During his impressive career, he also played for Chelsea. No way. Right. In turmoil. Some I'm team in back there, Borough. It's 6 3, and you're on fourth penalty. Potter can seal it technically with a with a hard one here, or he can go it's easy. Not even been a debate. And stroke, stroke one in. <laughs> I'm going to go. I'm going to go for a Penenka here. Hard one again. Hard one. Right, okay. This attacker came to Liverpool after a strong performance at the 2002 World Cup. At Merseyside, he never fulfilled the high expectations the cop had for him. And he's perhaps best remembered for accusations. That were, oh, here we go. El Hajjouf. El Hajjouf. Oh, <laughs> going to get everyone to three points. Three for Flair. <laughs> Four, four ads in a row, mate. I, he should be on every week. Get, get me killer back. I need to build my confidence. I, I've been listening every week. I've been listening every week to killer. I'm like, what are they playing at, guys? Come on. I know. Silk it, silky. Don't invite any more on you. Let's try and get some... Uh, let's try and get easy, a mate. Give me an easy one. This English... Do you know, the, the, the easy ones aren't always the easy ones. It's no, they're not. This English winger didn't always grab the headlines, but he nevertheless played an important role in Chelsea's winning titles in the 2000s. He came to Chelsea from West Ham and in 2010 transferred to Liverpool. On the international stage, he played 56 games for England. That should be quite easy. Joe Cole, is it? It is Joe Cole. 8-4. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what to do here. Do I, run out, do I run out of ball, back at net with ball or do I just... Run back to the centre circle. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Pitching very Slide on my knees. <laughs> are you going to go for the full Avada Kedavra or are you going to go for a quick spe- expelling? Oh, I've got to, mate. I've got to finish him off. Avada Kedavra. Yeah. A fifth hard. Here we go. This midfielder seemed to get himself involved in turmoil wherever he played, whether it was for Newcastle, QPR or Man City. The complications he brought to the teams he played for were balanced at times. By phenomenal Joey performance Barton. on the pitch. Oh, is it Joey Ooh. Barton? It's Joey Barton. I Potter think Matt chooses. Matt is choosing easy. Ten. Matt, are you sure you're not getting anything <laughs> out? Questions mixed up with here. A lot. We're not so then, it's, it's... I made the bald men cry. Black for hard there. Can you see? Yeah, that was so easy, man. <laughs> Give us a Spanish one. <laughs> <laughs> I know I've been taking one of the Spanish football before long. Uh, yeah. Right, okay, so let me just cancel leaving. Right, yeah, just cancel the Cosy. Yeah, you're right, right. It's yeah, 10 mate. 4. There's no <laughs> coming back here, Cosy. You have been put to the slaughter. However, you do have a chance to redeem a little bit of self respect. Easy or hard? Gone, mate. I'll have an, an easy one again, mate. An easy one. Everybody this energetic goes. Australian. Is known for his prowess in the air, despite not being an overly tall player. His goals were always celebrated, or almost always celebrated, by using the corner flag as a punching bag. What Australian guy? Oh, Tim Cale, sorry. That's yeah. it. So, Cosy, yeah, Cosy scores the penalty. <laughs> but... it's there, there we go. go. <laughs> Shake him. The bald man has been held responsible. Please win the yeah, if I can lose to another. Mate, if another ball guy wins, then then that's at least some consolation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> John, you've took on my unbeaten record, mate. And how many pins did I have on there? It's not going well. The last uh, <laughs> ten minutes Me or so, too, mate. Me too. John, I can't believe it. And every one, you have to pick an odd question. I mean, mate, he's, he's I winning. It's, that were like Man City ten others who won back in the day, mate. And I'm, I'm I couldn't. I, 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 I've been, been listening for weeks. I've been listening for weeks to pause and killer just getting all these easy answers, all these easy questions wrong. I was like, someone get me on that on that podcast right now. <laughs> I need to do it. If I had to lose, to lose to someone who's got the same hairstyle as myself. <laughs> Ball solidarity. Yeah, and a town fan of that as well. Today, but, three of us today. Oh, yeah, yeah. Part of me wonders if Matt's got them questions, uh, you know, easy and hard mixed up. But me, I don't want to be bitter, mate. I don't want to be bitter. Baldur's we'll game. Have a, we'll have a rematch next week. <laughs> oh, man. John, I've only got to get my confidence up, mate. But, yeah. 
<laughs> anyway, guys, obviously, oh, I woke up this morning. <laughs> Johnny sounds like you're still spewing over the penalty. And I've tried to get my positive head on, and uh, I'm struggling uh, with the running. And honestly, you can't make stuff up, can you? Yesterday, so let, let's get let's try and get get some sense of this. So Blackburn Rovers, everyone tells me an absolute free fall, like an absolute. Honestly, you, you're watching that game yesterday. Like, I mean, it's not often you want Leeds to win, but it's really weird. Every heart we were there, and Leeds are battering Blackburn. It's only a matter of these last ditch desperate blocks. There's only one team going to win it, and then Sam Smodic does that, and then we get beat. The night before, Leicester, who, you know, somehow, you know, destroyed, decided to try and send town down by losing at Millwall. So they go to Plymouth. Unbelievable again of all the play, the chances, Plymouth win one nil and and then you you're seeing like obviously our goal difference take a batter in, in this week and I don't know, I'm gonna cut to the chase really. I mean Sheffield Wednesday and Stoke, obviously that went well for us. But Johnny, I didn't realise this as much what you were saying, but the goal difference because obviously we seem to be getting beat by a lot of goals and stuff. We, and you see what what are we Goal difference wise for us, it's uh, minus 23. Minus 23. And you're thinking, how can that come in? Play minus 23. It's almost like forget it, but it's cost us, hasn't it? These some of these big defeats. And I suppose coming to you, mate, looking at everything coming in, it's it's a nightmare, mate, isn't it? I mean, you've got all the top three didn't win yesterday, so you, you know it's which you're going to have someone to play for the last day. You've got others that are kind of maybe out of it now. I mean, I've not even got Millwall written down here, Johnny. Uh, Blackburn have got 49 points, five points away from the seems an eternity, mate, with what they've got left. And the teams that all of a sudden we were like queuing with a few weeks ago, bit by bit, have gone. And how, how are you seeing things, mate? I, honestly, I, it's looking pretty grim for me from what I can make out. Yeah, uh, I'm worried um, more so is because of um, that Birmingham result, really. I mean, obviously, Plymouth, I would say, are gone now. Uh, Blackburn are gone. Um, Birmingham have still got Rotherham to play. And, and that's what really worries me because uh, I can see them beating Rotherham. I, I'll give them three points for that. So I'm thinking that that's going to put them on 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 48 points. There's a there's a real situation when we go to play them at our place that we're actually four points behind them. So even if we beat them, we'll, we'll be one point behind. Um, and then obviously we, we, we go into Ipswich in, in the last game of the season and Birmingham have got Norwich. Wagner's been killing us for two seasons. <laughs> so <laughs> no doubt he'll probably lose that one. But um it or either look to rest players, which might come yeah. back to beat us because um, but, but uh, yeah, are you saying when you're really, really worried? Behind us, are, you, are you counting? Are you say we're going to lose to Swansea then? Or no, no I'm saying in, in a worst case, worst course. case scenario, yeah, there's, there's every chance, it, yeah. It, 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 yeah. Um, and even, even if we even if we beat, um, even if, even if we beat Swansea, it, 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 are, are we going to win? Are we going to win two out of three? Um, I, I don't know. The only so, time we've yeah, done that I, I, was September when we beat we won at West Brom under Warnock and then beat a shocking Rotherham team the week after, so the the, the history doesn't look good. No, I'm really worried. Mm-hmm. I guess the other, the other team you, you could, I mean, QPR keep, keep have kind of their, their kind of little purple patch has completely ended, hasn't it? To be honest, um, but their uh, goal difference is three points above us. It's almost like four points, mate. They finished yeah, with Preston, so, Preston at home, Leeds at home, Coventry away. The same with Stoke. Stoker, yeah. do I mean catchable? But they're, they're actually four points above us, not three. Because at home, Southampton away, Birmingham at home, yeah, minus nineteen for goals. Yeah, three. so uh, yeah, it's it's and that again, it's not to kind of keep going back to it, isn't it? But even even with the Birmingham result, which was not what I expected um, against Coventry, um, those two points make make all the difference. Um, if you look at if you look at kind of the odds now, I think we are we are odds on. Um, which, which is the first time for a while we've been on some favourites to go down um, versus Birmingham on Wednesday um, and we've not even addressed Wednesday in this conversation as well who are doing back to picking up points undefeated in three I'm not sure they're, of their fixtures but Blackburn away West Brom at home Sunderland away so, yes yeah, so you've Blackburn, got two, and the Blackburn away game just to say is the dinner time one mate so that yeah. psychologically that could be Good yeah, for us so you've, you've got three teams there and nothing to play for. Two teams in mid table and West Brom who, who are guaranteed in the playoffs. So anything happen? We don't know. We can only guess. Um, but we, we've absolutely got to win on Saturday um, because I, I really believe Birmingham will win. Um, so it it, it 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 all comes down to that. And if we get the result that we need, then it, it I mean it all comes down to the Birmingham game. But yeah, um, not not confident. 
not confident. Um, very worried. Johnny, at what point did you kind of change from? I keep going about this Leeds game where I, I think I, I just looked who were coming back and how well we played and what the pictures we had to come out. I just thought there's no way we. Well, I just didn't see us going down at that point. At what I didn't, point? Have you, yeah. Yeah. Yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. I mean, I'd end the game. Up to um, yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not I'm not naive to the fact that I, mean, I wasn't like, no, nah, we'll be absolutely fine. I'd never say that as a town fan. Um, but it's certainly for me, like yesterday, when 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 we looked at the table um, and I knew Birmingham had that Rotherham game, it's the first time that I've I've been more confident we'd go down than, than stay up. I always thought we'd, we'd get results, which we would have got yesterday. Um, I think we, we could get some against Swansea, um, and I think it was in, it's in our gift to beat Birmingham, um, which which would have kept us safe. But now the way things have changed, I didn't expect Birmingham to, to get results out of Coventry. It's all kind of swung. Josh, well, how are you seeing him yeah, your face? I'm, your face I'm looks wetted. Uh, I'm saying with Johnny, really. He's one of them. I think yesterday the results just the, the, the results totally went against us. Like, say you were thinking, oh, Birmingham, Coventry should go there and and and, and turn them over, Three and then that they won they won three nil, and then Jeez. the penalty decision to for us to lose two more points and. It's one of them. We're going to have to do something we've only done once this season, aren't we? And win, win two games. Is it back to back? And I think, like I say, I think we've only done it once. And, and even then, mate, it, that, be enough. That, yeah. and that even then that might not be enough. Now, yeah, you know I mean, and if we have to go to it, we on last day. We're just you know, if they need to get some, it's you know, what I mean, I mean, unless they absolutely bottle it and we manage to do something, but what are we like if they get <laughs> if they score early, it's game <laughs> over for us, isn't it? So it's it's one of them. It's just. Swansea have no to play for, so you'd like to think if we, there's one game we can go at a team and try and get some mates that it could be very much like that Bristol City game, similar position at league, no to play for. That Birmingham game will be horrific, and it'll be horrific just on the fact there's a lot of town fans sort of our age who's probably seen it who remember what happened last time in Championship and who relegated us. <laughs> Unbelievable, <laughs> and it could, isn't it? The- and it oh, could right, happen right. again. Um, and you, you know, I mean, we're, we're sort of hoping on. Rather, rather them to get get to get some against them, but uh, are they? They've just seems to have to- totally given up now. So even winning them two games, you're not you're not guaranteed now to now to stay up, and it's going to go to the last day. To beat Millwall though, Josh, maybe a bit of hope, but I know they lost to Plymouth. I mean, but, if a draw, yeah. even if they manage to get a draw against them, we beat Swansea. You know what I mean? Just just to, just to take it into that, that last that game with Millwall, uh, not Millwall, Birmingham. Sorry, but um. Yeah, I think they're going to win. I think we're up against it now, to be honest. I think it sort of could have knocked the stuffing out of the fan base. I mean, like you said, the players are clearly playing at Bristol City. So, may, hopefully, they haven't sort of given up. And maybe maybe the anger for that will spur them on for these next two home games and we can get two wins. And even if it, it, the worst does happen, we go down with a fight. But um, I just, I don't know. I think it's just being a town fan. I just look at look at worst side of it. I just can't see it. I just can't see it happening. I think it's. Just, I said to you before the start of the pod, didn't I? When I just said, you play Russian roulette with relegation too many times. Your luck runs out, and one that that one time bang, it's done. And I think that it could just be that time. Everything's gone against us. Three managers during season. This nothing's been settled. It could just be our year. Unfortunately, it's one of them. John, why does it feel, I don't it's only my personal thoughts, but we're only one point behind Birmingham, we've got them to come up home, but why does it feel, I don't, like, it, it seems so far away at the moment, just staying up, mate. I, so, think, I mean, do, do you share that view, or? Yeah, I think, you know, I've been saying for a couple of weeks, I think we're down, but it, you know, I still turned on, on Tuesday night, and on Saturday, hoping that we'd win, and thinking, you know, we could pull this off, but I think, if you've been a realist now, We've played 45 games of football this season, including the Cups. We've won nine games of football. We're not very good. We're just not a very good team. <laughs> uh, you, uh, <laughs> you know, we, we, we've played well probably for a full 90 minutes in one game. I'm looking at that Blackburn game when we won, was it 3-0? But other than that, a lot of our wins have been, you know, harem's game sort of stuff, Sunderland away when we're hanging on. Um, so for us, for us to stay up now, we have to win against Swansea and Birmingham. I think we'll beat Swansea. I think we'll lose 1-0 to Birmingham. I think we'll get absolutely hammered by Ipswich. But but say that we do beat Swansea and we do beat Birmingham, we've then got to hope that Birmingham don't no, beat we Rotherham. We're still more down, won't we? We're still yeah. down, won't we? Yeah, but, but Birmingham will beat Rotherham and Birmingham will beat Norwich on the last game of the, the season. So every, everything's against us. If we'd have got those two extra points yesterday, 
I'd have been saying something completely different. But still could beat Plymouth, I think, on Saturday. But you don't know, I suppose. But yeah, still but still fifty points, isn't it? You know, it's just said, said it we done Saturday, mate. Yeah, it's, I mean, I watched that Leicester Plymouth game on Friday night, and Plymouth just looked like a much better team than us. They really did. I I was watching it, imagining what time we'd be doing in that scenario, and I was thinking, well, Matty Pearson would be getting the ball, and he'd be just absolutely booting it fifty yards out of play. Sober Thomas would be crossing it into the box, and there'd be nobody there. Someone would switch off. They'd get a pullback goal. You know, we're just we're we're not very good, and I'd love us to stay up. I really would. I don't want to go all Kevin Keegan about it, but I. The, the the only thing the only way I can see it is is as Josh said, if Brighton right motivates these players and says we were robbed we were we were robbed by a referee against Bristol City now we need to go out and we need to make sure that we get seven points out of nine games because I think seven points out of nine games would guarantee it. I mean, the chances of it happening. <laughs> I mean, slim to not. Oh, like, oh it's John. You shouldn't be drinking the player coming in, man. <laughs> <laughs> The thing is, it's like it's going, going back to what we said, what Josh said about under Welsh. It's it's not the, it's that's not the decision going to relegate us. And going on the relegation topic as a as a whole, it's it's games like the Rotherham game. It's like we're giving Birmingham three points here because they're playing Rotherham. We failed to do that. We were awful, yeah. absolutely awful. And if you keep adding on points to the table, if you if you, if you ignore the the decision against Bristol City, if 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 we beat the worst team in championships ever seen. When they're pretty much down, you had two points on, and the com- the conversation is completely different. So it's like, are we going to beat Swansea in Birmingham and, and get a result against it? Which is why can't we can't beat. Well, I'd go back further, Johnny. Me, I'd I'd go back to your games like Plymouth at home, Swan- 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 Swansea away from home. When you con, you know what I mean, you've scored, but you conceded ninety odd minute. You know what I mean? Then you've got that mm. three game period when we had what Plymouth at home, QPR away, Blackburn away. We were all well within their games to win them yeah. win them games. How many you know, points is it now, Josh? 27? 27, 20, we've 27 points we've yeah. dropped from winning positions or something like that this season. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like John said, like, we're a poor side. No matter what happens, like, if we go down or stay up, a lot of it needs gutting. It don't, it's a poor side. So when you've yeah. won nine games all season, we can't sit here and deny the fact that we probably deserve to be down where we are. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> no hiding from it is there? Yeah, we've drawn sixteen games or seventeen games, and that's the issue. We've gone a it's, long period of time. We're not winning games. If you sit and think about it right now, you could probably rattle off every single win this season. That shouldn't be the case. We've been Sunderland over and away. How should yeah. you be? Yeah. <laughs> we bet you yeah. two times. <laughs> Jesus Christ! You know what, though, John? There's been flickers, haven't there? But there's just been nothing. This team just cannot be trusted. Cannot put anything together. That, that Sunderland game underway, that was as good as we played that home. We were pressing, we were good, but then we just followed up with some like, draws. There's that famous quote, and I'm, I'm going to butcher it, but it's that Navy Seals quote that says, "Under pressure, you sink to the level of your training." And I think that's so true with Town because. You know, the past like three or four games I've watched, I think Brighton right, his tactics have been good. I don't understand sometimes why he doesn't bring a striker on. I think the tactics have been good, but then when the pressure comes up, we just revert. We start making the same mistakes. That second was it the second goal that Preston scored the other day? The cutback across the six yard box. We've conceded that goal about five hundred times this season. Yeah. Why why are the players not learning? And they're just literally it's just ugh. mentally gone. They're, 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 they're all gone. Before we're mentally gone. Yeah. Obviously, you know, whether Brighton right is the man of leaders, let's hope this time next week we're still in the, the mix to stay up. But yeah, obviously, uh, it's not going to be a good week, I don't think, for the uh, for everyone at other seal fans, players. But we've got to get it done next Saturday. Just moving on to a little bit of other business and that as well. Kieran Phillips of Sacramento, quite an interesting one, wasn't it? That came out this week and Obviously, much we're talking about swapping different things, etc., marketing players, and we were sent many times. But Johnny, can we read much into that? Is it just a player who's probably, let's be honest, not got much future at Huddersfield Town because he's not at our level, maybe going to a lower level, or is it the start of maybe something bigger? Or what do you think? You know? No, I don't, I don't think it's the start of Huddersfield Town being a feeder club to Sacramento. Yeah, which is saw someone get a little bit upset about on Twitter, which I think is slightly ridiculous. <laughs> We'll get in not, there, people, we, I know we, we are we are intrinsically linked. Do you know what I mean Kieran Phillips is is he's had a few loans in his country. He, he, some have done better than others. Um, 
I think I think he's a he's a reasonable player. Um, I don't quote me, so I don't know how many clubs he's he's been at this season where he could go out to get a couple of games in in England. I don't think he can do. Um, just the number of clubs he's played for. So yeah, what what, what a great place to spend a few weeks in California. Why why wouldn't you want to do that? So fair enough. It's nice. It's nice. It's nice bit of PR. Um, they'll probably buzz off it a bit more than, than we do. But yeah, don't don't see any problems with it. If we can send a couple of our kids to go get a bit of a culture, a bit of experience, try for a different country. I know the standard's not as good, but you'll learn things from it. So so yeah, don't see any don't see any issue with it. Are we going to send our best prospects there to develop? Probably not. Um but equally well, why not if, if he's happy to go um and it's a bit of nice bit of PR between the clubs then then yeah, fair enough. We 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 we're, we're, we're I mean, we're, we're a football group now. We've, we're our own owners, two clubs. So you're going to see things happen between them. So um, don't see, don't see an issue with it at all. No worries. Just uh, free coaches to Bristol City. I thought that were a good move. Uh, made a lot of noise. I thought the fans were brilliant, mate, yesterday. And yeah, obviously we're, most, we're good. We had a bit of cider and what have you, but that, I like to see stuff like that, mate. And obviously, yeah. Nagel's, uh, you know, been doing some good stuff like that. That were good to hear, wasn't it? Yeah, we're good to get. I wanted we're it three coaches that they put on. We're it just we're yeah. just three of them. Or yeah, I mean, yeah, it's nice and it gets get some more fans there. It's what they need. And by all accounts, like I say, I think the club were coming out. I know they, they say it generally, don't they? That all the fans have been good, but they look like they were a good following down there because Bristol is usually one of them places where we don't particularly take a. I can't remember us taking a good following to Bristol every time I've been, I've been down there. So yeah, to get get more than what we'd usually take down there and put a bit of noise, uh, get get behind the lads and stuff. Um, it was a good little move, wasn't it? Especially in the times we are at the moment, because even if it adds a couple of hundred on, it's better than no, isn't it? Yeah, we're good, and uh, Shane didn't get the win, but obviously we've discussed that. And we've won something, uh, which is great to hear, and that's also tonight's the EFL Awards. Uh, don't think many of our players will be uh, getting individual awards, uh, or, but we uh, we were in for two awards, uh, one for fan engagement. I don't know what's happened to that, uh, whether we, we got that as well, but we've won uh, the Diversity Award winner for work towards. Uh, Improving the female fan experience at, at the game, and uh, yeah, just having a look at that, uh, we've won it through initiatives uh, such as dedication women at the game. So we've got women at the game fixture in that as well. Uh, we're, we're breastfeeding friendly venue. Uh, we've got a women's plus network, which is a group dedicated to increasing female representation across stakeholder groups and both staff and supporters have significantly grown in members this season, and we became the first football club. Uh, to become menopause friendly, and in 2023, we're the most supportive partner award at the menopause friendly employer awards. So I always think, you know, when we kind of win an award like that, it's pretty special, really, because it's obviously a national thing. And you know, while you know, obviously we want everything to be right on the pitch and that as well, which is out of our control, and that's why there's a lot of stuff in our control. And obviously, we won't got you know big budgets compared to other clubs, but it must be a proud, you know, proud moment, you know, tonight when they they come to get their awards as well and. Yeah, we, we want it to be all inclusive. We've mentioned before, you know, we talked about, you know, last week, uh, you know, about the issue, you know, with the child we're getting abused and then, you know, kind of as a, with a guest and that as well. So the club do so many things right and that as well. And uh, yeah, really pleased to see we get that award as well uh, on there. And yeah, just finally, really, yeah, just looking, looks like Jonathan Ogg's season's done from what, Right and right was saying and that as well, which is sad. I mean, he's kind of a guy you'd really want, you know, whether you want it in the next uh, three games and that as well. It sounds like Volker, you know, maybe he's not going to be involved in that as well. And uh, yeah, it's it's really sad. I, I, I dragged myself on it and I don't know about you guys, but just like you said, Johnny, I think it's the first just kind of ending really. I don't know what your final thoughts are, but it just feels like to me the first, you've always feared relegation. You've always clutched at this and that, but it just, it just feels, I mean, we've had, this is the last chance to loon in it this Saturday. And even now it's not in our hands and it might not be. It does. I'm kind of looking at that League One table and now I was looking at it last night thinking Stockport and Wrexham have got up and that's a good away day. And, and I know we'll always be town fans and we'll be there, but it just, when you said Johnny, we're odds on now and that's all. It just, just feel that, yeah, it's Saturday, it's, it's not going to be one for the faint out, is it? If, it? if we stay up from this point, it just feels like it'll be a pretty good achievement, won't it, really, when yeah, we should have, uh, you know, probably turned it around long before now and that as well. But yeah, yeah. I don't know if you've got, got any final thoughts, guys, what we find a close. Uh, yeah, it's been a tough, tough week, hasn't it, for us and that as well? It, it has. And do you know I mean, I, I, won't, I, won't, I won't give up until until it's done. Do you know I mean, I, I have um, 
I'm aware of who's in League One, and I'll, 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 I'll there's some dates in there you think fair enough, and you, you'll go to a few, a few different games. But I mean, I'm, I'm clutching at straws to kind of have positive reasons to, to go back there. Um, <laughs> took us a long, long time to get out, to get out. Um, last time, and I think the fees, I think I do think the club. Um, I mean, we've said this most but I do think the club will progressively set up from from this year to next. I do, I do think that I do think that's the case. Um, so it would be a shame. Um, I guess you've just got to try and take positive. You've got to look at Ipswich, who are currently top of the top of the championship. Who I mean, came straight up and have done that. Um, they they were a big club to. They weren't necessarily big club to go down. They were, big, they were they were a big well, club well, to go well, down, well. but they they yeah. they've done many many years in the championship for them. League One really was was horrendous. So you there are there are success stories that come in that, but take 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 it. Um, from me, that that's a tough league to get out of. We all know that as town fans, but the quality in that division is far higher than than when we left it. Um, so it, it's not a, it's not a place where I'm going down thinking it's going to be an easy ride. And I'd I'd probably rather be struggling in the championship than struggling in League One. Because I don't know, for mental health, struggling to get <laughs> struggling in League One is not a place you want to be as a, <laughs> a town fan. Christ, at least we can say we're still in the championship. But it's one of them. It, it does affect you. Um, it is hard. Um, but yeah, we've got Saturday. We've we've still got the ability to, to if, like John said, if we get seven from nine, um, I think that would be enough. We've got it in our gift to get to get nine from nine. We we can do that. It's not impossible. Um, so until it happens, um, let's just keep being positive. But yeah, at least at least if we do get relegated to to against Birmingham, because um, last time that happened, that must have been about six or seven. And it's the only time I can ever remember my mum coming to football. Yeah. She didn't come to football, but she went shopping whilst we went. And she bought me a pair of pyjamas, which tells you which ages me. We couldn't don't buy me pyjamas anymore. But she bought me pyjamas, blue and white, with Division 1 on. I said, these are lovely. Look at them, blue and white. And they said Division 1 on. And it was the day we got relegated. And my dad has never forgiven me for that. So at least, at least that won't happen this time around. But yeah. Please don't know, mate. With the pyjamas, I'll, I'll buy you some. <laughs> Yeah, I can pitch them now. I, yeah, and she was like, "Everyone's so quiet. What's happened? She's not into football. Everyone's so quiet, and everyone's like, what's happened? I've got you these. Yeah, yeah. I'll get them now, Johnny. Josh, have you got your league league one wire clips ready, mate? Or you, you still got that fight? League, the, league, the league league one tour flag. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's one of those. It's like Johnny said, it's not over yet, is it? We've got to keep fighting to end. But yeah, it's like if we go down, we've all seen it before. It's happened before. Like I said. We said before, didn't we? Just before we started recording, I just hope if we do go down, we act like the club we should do at that level, a big club at that level, and just man, chairman backs the manager, go get the players, get out of the league. We're not, we're, we're not here to dwell in it anymore. Straight out of it, job done. It can go either way, though. That's the issue. But hopefully, it don't come to that. But if it does, put your big boy pants on and act like a big club town for once. John, take us out, mate. Final thought from you. Look, all, all I'd like to say is I, I'm looking at a, a framed poster I've got up on the wall now of Aaron Moy scoring against Manchester United. What was that, seven years ago? <laughs> and <laughs> Kevin... seven, on it. John, John. <laughs> but hey, and, and Kevin Nagel, <laughs> in, in his diaries and stuff, he's come out and he said, um, look, we're going to make mistakes. Well, Now's not the time for mistakes anymore. And if and if he wants a good catalogue of mistakes of what not to do with a football club, look at everything that we've done since we got relegated from the, the Premier League because we have been badly run consistently. I mean, I could go into so many different things here. We had a director of football who was working fantastically on a shoestring and then we blamed him. It was all his fault. He, you know, it was nothing to do with the investment. It was Bromby all Lee Bromby's fault. Then it was Danny Schofield's fault. Then it was Fotheringham's fault. Then it was... Who was after him? It wasn't Warnock's fault, but some of it was. Moore's and then fault. and then it was Moore's fault. And it, right it's now, everybody's yeah. fault. But it's, it's it's not the manager's fault. It's we've been run badly for years. And if you consistently run a football club badly, you'll get bad results. So if the worst does happen, then I want Nagel and everyone to, to learn the lessons from that. And I want the fans to learn the lessons from that. I don't want to log on to Twitter and see it's all Brighton Writers' fault or it's all Brody Spencer's fault or or whatever, but that doesn't matter because we're going to win all three games we're going to stay up. <laughs> John, that is the way to end it, mate. And he knows what he's on about. It's just going a quiz today. Absolutely. <laughs> the guy knows his onions. Guys, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. We'll be back next week, whatever happens, and uh, hopefully England have beaten Wales in the big game next Saturday up the town.
There's a team that is dear to its followers The colors are bright blue and white They're a team of renown They're the pride of the town And the game of football is their delight And all the while upon the field of play Thousands loudly cheer them on the way Often you can hear them say who can be the town today And then the bells will ring so merrily And every goal shall be a memory So town play up And bring that cup back to others the town play up and bring the cup back to Huddersfield.